Hi guys, Sir Capuch here. Sorry for that voice cracking. <coughs> so, hi guys, Sir Capuch here, and today I'm back with some Xbox One stuff. Now, even the biggest Xbox fans realize the reception for the Xbox One hasn't been too good. Many Xbox fanboys have said, "I'm gonna get a PS4 now," even though after a E3, I'm gonna say, "Oh no, 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 guys, I'm just kidding." Oh well. But, today, I have some positives from this unveiling. Yes, there were some. And I'll name two right now. It's actually quite hard to find positives, this thing. But, the first positive, and I'd say the bigger positive, is the controller. Now, pretty much everyone who's not hate very insane. Oh yeah, the controller's good. And you know what? They're right. This controller does look good. It seriously does look like... A flawless controller. I'm serious. Okay, sure, it doesn't have the look of the 360. People are, might find that better, but in terms of functionality, I'd say the Xbox One controller is to spot on. I don't know its about its reliability yet. I don't know about its battery life. No one does, but it looks sturdy and it seems to have fixed all the problems of the old Xbox controller. Let's take a look. As you can see, the analog sticks are still familiar. Have a bet seem to have a better indent, and having better indents on the analog sticks, uh, which is is something that the Xbox controllers have always had over the PS PlayStation. But it seems to have fixed all the problems of the old uh, Xbox controller. And personally, I kind of like the design. It seems uh, sure the new Xbox look might not be all that appealing, but I like this design. It's a lot cleaner, a lot more simplistic than, say, the Xbox 360 controller. In fact, I might as well compare it right now. Still X, people think it's the Xbox 720. Th that'll fade off Google soon enough. Let's compare it with the old Xbox 360 controller. As you can see, the indents don't seem nearly as well designed or clear. It doesn't look... You have to admit that this doesn't look dearly as sharp and the d-pad sucks as you know uh, the buns the buns look a little less a little less sturdy uh, that's no big deal but and the tra the triggers are pretty standard no it's battery the, the Xbox 360 controller one thing made great is that it has really good battery sure you need to buy a battery pack for it but it's worth it if you want 40 hours of battery life marathon gamers who love it and it's still in it's still a noticeable improvement of the original Xbox controller with its tiny little indents that weren't very good, I can imagine. Mm. All sorts of Xbox three sixty controllers, but just for fun, let's do a side by side comparison of the Xbox One controller and the three sixty controller. Let's get this Xbox One review. Now let's see. First, you look at the 360 controller. Sure, the, I'll give it this player. The, this indicator sh show me players are connected. I'll give it that, but let's see. Let's first compa compare the analog sticks. I'll have to do a side. I'll actually have to look up a side view to get a true feel for how good the, these are. As you can see, the Xbox One's indents on the analog sticks seem a lot sharper and more defined than the Xbox 360's ones. And as for the buttons, fit with the design better than the Xbox 360's buttons. The D-pad for one is much better. It's up to par for Nintendo D-pad, I think. And in the Sony one, too. Now, at this point, D-pads aren't too important, but likewise, it's good to have a good D-pad. That's something the 360 did not have. Let's take a look at the back with the triggers. The triggers are pretty much unchanged. But look at this. It's coming in with a built-in battery this time. That's another advantage. If you if you don't get this already, the Xbox One controller. Oh, this is perfect. I want. Now look at the side by side. The Xbox can, One controller, like it or not, does look like a step forward over the 360 controller. Seems like the 360 one might have a better shape, but I don't know. No one's tried the Xbox One controller, except, so they can't really get a feel for it themselves. Don't listen to what those. Don't listen to what the people. 
and those channels say but the control is feel and because it's they're not you so they might not just feel with you overall I think the Xbox One controller is an improvement because it looks a lot sharper it has a better d-pad and analog sticks than the 360 controller which to be honest 360 controller looked pretty cool cool for the Xbox One's controller is announced now I feel like it looks like a child's story Correct me if I'm wrong, hate me if you want, but you have to admit, it does look kind of like a child story now. Which it kind of is, considering all the kids on Xbox Live, but that's not a positive. Well, it can be a positive if you're not counting COD. COD five-year-olds are, yeah, you already know. Too many videos to count on it. Now, the second part that's great about the Xbox One is the Connect 2. No. You know what TV thing? That TV thing everyone's making fun of because it seems to be overshadowing gaming on the Xbox One, according to the review. Well, if you look at the voice commands, you look how it, everything is integrated smoothly. It's done quite darn well. Even though it's, it shouldn't be a central feature, Microsoft just put it in the sideline as a minor, as a minor convenience because if you look. Because if you look, smart TVs will probably have voice control functionality soon, so so the Xbox One's TV functionality might become obsolete, but you have to admit, even though it's overshadowing gaming, it seems to be done to be pretty well. Sure, you could do it with your remote control, but, but you don't have to really switch the channel ch channels. Like, you know how you have to press that... On my, m on my remote for my t for the TV we have in my house, they have there's a source button. You have to press that. Then you have to go down to the to the correct area input area where the, your where your Xbox would be. And I don't have an Xbox, so I can't really say that for myself. But Xbox, but now you don't have to do that. Just go to your Xbox One and be there. It's pretty much a cable box inside the console as well, which, well, it shouldn't be overshadowing gaming. Like I said, that's a pretty good good thing, because you won't need to take up as much space, which should give make up for one of the negatives. The Xbox One is huge, and you probably could kill a man with that. Videogames.com, you probably could, considering its size. In fact, that looks metal, looks metallic, so it could probably kill someone with that. Wait until you see, wait until you see those stories come out, like, guy, guy drops Xbox One in person, person in hospital. That's not something to joke about, but it could happen. And right now, since it has happened, you can joke about it. So it, let's joke about it now, but when it happens, just stop doing it. Just stop doing it if you're a good person. Oh wait, okay, okay. Now, just like episode 13, it's the 150% one, I've actually... Reschedule it to Saturday. Maybe I'll reschedule it to Saturday. I don't know. I may have time to do the Just Take episode 13, but I still haven't come up for all topics, so it might be unlikely. Still, though, it might be on Saturday. No big deal. Because it's the first time I've done the while a Just Take on Saturday since I've. Since I just don't really do that often. Unless I really want to. Oh, well. You know what? You know what, since you can't, you can, you, when you looked up Xbox One, you're probably, tr and you're a PlayStation fan or a PC fan, like many people who watch my videos might be, as well as Xbox fans, I may have PC fans, I may have Xbox fans, I may have Minecraft fans, to the micro Minecraft fans, I'm not going to make Minecraft in a while, but I might, just, just look out for it, in, in the meantime, enjoy the content you have here right now. And hmm, this turned into an update video, so let's get negatives. First one, TV overshadows gaming. That's straightforward. Second, indie self pub indie self publishing band, and I think that's the it well to many gamers, it's not the worst thing. It's not uh, actually the worst thing, but in my opinion, it's the worst thing. But I'll have to admit, what TV overshadowing gaming in the game console is far worse. But still, though. I say indie gaming is the future, it's varietized, and it just 
seems a lot more fun than AAA gaming. And as for gr where will I go for to test my PC's graphics capabilities, just say, leave that to the benchmarks. No, to spend as much on gameplay since there is no gameplay and they can just focus on the graphics and intensity. But the third thing that's bad about the Xbox One is that Microsoft. Oh wait, I forgot to finish the second thing. Well, the third thing has to do with Kinect, but the second negative is the fact that Xbox, the Xbox One, as it is not. Well, I need to show publishing. I already said that. But here's the thing. If indie gaming overtakes AAA gaming, Sony and Micro, Sony and Nintendo, and and Valve will, and EA too will have indie games on their platform, on their game platforms, and Microsoft will have virtually none. And like that will kill Microsoft's Xbox One. They'll lose game support entirely unless they change this. Change this for a free Microsoft. Change it now, or you'll or yours. Gonna be screwed in the long term, just like Nintendo was when they tried to bank on the casuals for the for the Wii, which leads, which actually does we won't it free, which is like I said, Connect. Well, Connect isn't a bad thing. Connect the Connect 2.0 hardware is accurate, it's high resolution, and it's pretty solid. But the thing is, it shouldn't be Microsoft's center of focus, considering how much Microsoft is pushing the Connect right now. Out of these 50 exclusives. Twelve of them will be Kinect games. That's what it looks like. And I don't want that to happen, Microsoft. Don't go the way Nintendo did. That but bit them hard when when all the casuals went to the smartphones. And you should know that. I'm pretty sure the casuals all went to the smartphones sometime in 20, early 2011 to, mid, to late 2010. It was happening before, but not in the masses. But, but Microsoft. The Kinect is... The Kinect, you can have it there. It'll be a cool little piece for developers to experiment with. Just no, but don't make your center focus of your gaming experience. Focus on the games made for that controller thing. You know, that really good controller I was talking about? That is an amazing controller. I think it's one of the best game controllers I've ever seen. Feel free to argue. I still think mouse and keyboard is the best though. Particularly this Razer Black Widow Open is probably the best keyboard I've ever ever used and most expensive <laughs> oh well let's go on number four is also has to do with connect and the fact that you need to connect to use your xbox one now that is just m microsoft you just put two points of fail major points of failure for your game console if the Xbox One stops working, you can't use your Xbox One, but if your Xbox One is working and faults hardware and all your game saves stuck on there, what if the Xbox what if the Kinect fails? Then you won't be able to use your Xbox One and you'll have to go out and spend hundred dollars for a whole new Kinect. If the Xbox 360's Kinect died, you could just play like nothing happened and maybe if you will you will enjoy the Kinect game, then you could go and get out. I I see a money making scene, Microsoft, but Ultimately, trying to make the most milk your consumers will in the end. Well, first of all, it will give you a lot of money because people can be sheep sometimes. But in the end, people are going to be turned off from you. It's how new VA right now, and your 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 money is just going to empty out. So don't. So try not to do that. Sure, it might have to help de have developers easily integrate Connect stuff into to the games without people complaining from incompatibility but still Microsoft it should have been like the Xbox 360 as somebody could just have it, have it decide five is a multitude of things it's the d it's the, f the online check and the use games block again straightforward except the online block uh, the online block or as in the online only thing Microsoft I know you want people. I know you want people to be always online, but it's not helping you. Piracy still happens. Look at EA Sim City. Within a week, that DRM was destroyed, and people were still mad EA over it, like because a normal consumer can hack it like that pirate did. You're not gonna block piracy with DRM. What you need to do is make an experience so compelling that that pirates will feel guilty pirating the thing. 
Or if you get a piracy pr protection, at least be creative in trolling with it. Not bad trolling, but non trolling isn't just screwing the consumer over. Even if he actually bought the game legit, as but just if they bought the ga got the game legally, like Earthbound did, like that fi that final layer of defense where they may you do they do all your saves and freeze the game and has some own custom dialogue. That is just that was just brutal. I check my time, make sure I time left. But seriously, number six, number. Okay, that's all for that. Number six. The size of the Xbox One. Judging from the Xbox One size, let's compare it to the largest game console right now, the Atari 5200. With its horrible controller, no? Is it bigger? It might not be as wide as. It might, the Xbox One, I think, is bigger. It's taking the crown, which is a bad thing. S sure, the Xbox One may not be quite as wide, but I think it might be that too. But it's also a lot taller, so it's more. D so its overall volume, I bet, is a lot higher. So that's that's a bad part. Having a big console taking up that your t your shelves below your television is pretty bad. And for people wanting to stand it on its on the top and make it look cool, too bad because the. Because number seven, some issues with the design. Microsoft, look here, look here. Oops, my, for my uh, thing was glitching. If you look here, that's ventilation. I don't know if that's ventilation or just looks. Might be ventilation, but I'm pretty sure the temperatures of the Xbox One are skyrocketed if you put it saw on its top, which would be a bad thing. Look at that. That's not the best ventilation design, Microsoft. You should put the ventilation on the top. It might sacrifice looks, but let people put the thing on their top if they actually could anyway. But still, though, you could put the Xbox 360 on its top; it would look cool. But just no Microsoft. Just that's just some poor ventilation design. This pretty much falls in life number six. But <laughs> what else? Number eight. Not only is TV overshadowing the games, they didn't bother show ga real gameplay or anything. Unless you count Call of Duty Cinematics as a real gameplay, but it's not. You're not going to see that. If you see per someone trying to remake the cinematic gameplay in a Call Ghost multiplayer game, they'd probably have the worst score in history, but that's just me. Mm, and I'm going hard pressed here. Let's look at the specs and try to criticize those. Number nine, based on rumors, well look, it's far behind the PS4 in power, as in 50% behind, which means 1.84 teraflops on the PS4, 1.23 teraflops on the Xbox One. And another bad thing about that, not only is that going to make game support dry up for really high-end games later on, you might see a PS4 version of Far Cry 6, but not on the Xbox One because it's too weak to run the poor thing, poor game. But <sighs> Microsoft, it'd be okay if you were just one inch behind the PS4, like 1.7 teraflops. But this, considering the launch price of $550, it's gonna be hard to sell your thing when I could get a computer for Radeon sheet 8850 when the range 8850 comes out and it would outperform the Xbox One and it'd be $500 or so. I could make that budget happen, not have it with a seller like it did in the $420 build. I look back, that was embarrassing. But I could make that happen with a build and still have a 5 gig hard drive, 8 gigs of RAM, and Microsoft. Well, sure, it'd be 600 with the OS, but still, the PC would have the games library, which I already said, and not just kill you. And that was already saying number 10, so I'm pretty much done here. Sure. No, I need one po more positive, a third positive to get away all this negative stuff. Well, the connect on one thing is not as, uh, not is also a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing as in developers will be able to like, connect things into the game. Maybe if they integrate right, it won't have you like waving your arms around COD ghosts. Maybe just 
we would just have you open the door by reaching around, turning it, turning your handle, considering the Xbox One connects snoot accuracy. So, they could have cool realism implementations like that. And they wouldn't have compatibility complaints from people who have an Xbox without the connect, which probably happened with the Xbox 360. Oh well, that's the third, that's the third positive. So, I found three positives and ten negatives. Good day everyone, subscribe to me Dark Aperture if you enjoyed, goodbye.